So now let's tie a few things together from the last few lectures. So let's take the loads on the uh, internal forces in our truss members for a truss that looks like this that we've already solved and connect that to the shear and bending moment diagram that we've just looked at. So here what we're thinking of is the truss is just a structure which is spanning across a distance where we have a load in the center. And what we saw there is the shear goes from a value of P over two to negative P over two uh, right as the center. The moment increases linearly as we go towards the center and then decreases as we go towards the other end. So the bending moment internal to the structure is zero at the two ends, maximum in the middle. In the shear, we have two regions uh, that are equal, but an opposite sign. Our structure up here, I've expanded it to be a little bit longer than the one we solved in the video, but it's essentially the same structure. So I've color coded the members blue if they're in compression. So the top is all in compression and the load in the members increases P, 2P, 3P. The bottom I've color coded red as being in tension and the bottom goes from P over two, 3P over two to 5P over two. The diagonal members alternate between tension and compression, but they all have the exact same magnitude, P over two times root two. Now the root two comes in because this is a 45 degree truss. We could change the angle, we'd get a very similar result, but maybe a different factor here uh, in the middle. Okay, so let's see if we can now uh, take some slices of our truss and kind of understand the loadings of these internal members and make the connection to our shear and bending moment diagram. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that we've sliced our truss. So I'm gonna imagine that we take a slice here and what that means is in this member here, it had a load, which you can't see because I've now covered it up of 2P, but that bar is in compression, meaning that there's gonna be a force exerted in that direction. This bar here is gonna be in tension, which means if I cut it in half, has to be a force exerted on our structure going th this direction, which is 3P over two. And this bar here, the one right in the middle on this 45 degree element, this bar is also in tension. So there's gonna be a force directed at that 45 degree angle, which is uh, the square root of two times P over two. So those are the three forces that are acting. Now, if we look at these, uh, this is not a vertical force, so it does not contribute to the shear. This is not a vertical force, so it does not contribute to the shear. The only force that contributes to the shear is the vertical component of this downward force here, right? So this downward force here has a magnitude of P over two times root two, but it's angled at 45 degrees. So what's the vertical component? Nothing more than P over two pointing down. So the vertical component of the shear is P over two pointing down, which exactly balances that P over two. And that's the same result if I get uh, slice the beam here, right? So we look at a compression point of our structure, we'd get the exact same result. But in compression, remember when I slice the member, that force is directed inward on the structure, right? So if I break the structure here, I have this vertical force here, which has the magnitude P over two times the root two. And again, if I break that into horizontal and vertical components, what's the magnitude of this vertical component? P over two pointing downwards. Uh, I could go to the other side of the structure and I could make the same type of arguments, but now you can see here the tension force would be pulling this one. Uh, so it'd be just a simple change of sign. So that's why we see this kind of mirror symmetry as we go across the middle point here, but that we see the values are always the same in magnitude, but alternate in sign. So when it's upward, it's in tension, when it's downward in compression and vice versa here. And that's just to maintain that value of the shear force, which we could get from our shear and bending Bowman diagram. Pretty cool, right? Let's look at the uh, tension and compression members along the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna take another slice here and I'm gonna pretend that I'm slicing my a structure right here. This one that I've sliced had a magnitude of 3P. It's in compression. So it's a vector of magnitude 3P pointed in that direction. Now there's some stuff going on here, but I don't have to worry about it because the only thing I wanna do is I wanna sum the moments. 
and I want to make sure that those are equal to zero, right? Because if I take any slice of the, this free body diagram, sum the moments about any point, I better get zero. So in this case, if I sum the moments, I have 3p times one unit of load going upwards, right? This is one unit of length and uh, I have 3p going in that direction, so it's negative. Plus, I have p over 2 times 2, 4, 6 units, right? Because this is one unit of length, it's half of this uh, triangle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So minus 3p plus 3p, because these are counterbalancing, I get the moments are summed perfectly. If I slide this over and make the cut here, everything stays the same, except now this becomes a two, this becomes a two, and now I'm one, two, three, four units, and so perfect, so it works again. So let's make a cut here. So I have tension acting here. It's gonna have a magnitude of P over two pulling that way, because that's what we figured out the tension in this member is. Now I'm gonna sum the moments about that point there. And we don't even need to do the exercise. So we've got P over two pulling this way and P over two pulling this way. So they have the same moment arm and they're the same force, but they're pulling in opposite directions because this one wants to rotate the structure that way. This one wants to rotate the structure that way. Sum of the forces equals zero. And as I move inward, I would have the same argument, except now the moment arm here is much longer. The moment arm is three. Hence why we get the 3p over 2. If I made the cut here, the moment arm to this reaction force to here is 5 units, hence the 5p over 2. So now we can see uh, how the shear and bending moment diagram connect to the forces in these members.